Well, hello everyone, this is Sean Taylor, uh, Field Application Scientist with BioRad Canada. And I'm going to now talk to you about um, Bioplex Manager, which is the software that BioRad has developed to not only operate uh, Illuminex uh, 200 system, but also to uh, it integrates the data analysis in the same software. So in a previous video, I showed you how to operate the system and load the plate. And now in this uh, video training, I'm going to show you how to actually use Bioplex Manager to analyze the associated data from a Hyplex assay. So um, in this example, I've opened up a data file. It's a 27plex um, assay, so 27 cytokines analyzed per sample on a variety of human samples. And you can see here there are a variety of, um, of buttons that you can use to uh, go in to various aspects of the data, and right now in the raw data. So if you can, uh, just, just to show you, these are the bead regions um, that were used. So there are 27 different analytes. If I mouse over them, you can see what they are. IL-17 is an example, IL-9, and so on. And these bead regions are sorted, essentially. So bead regions meaning bead types or, or beads of different coding of classification die 2 and classification die 1. So these are exactly the same dimension of bead. The only difference between each bead that's used is the coding of the two dies that are on the beads so that the instrument recognize the, recognizes each bead in spectrally distinct locations on what's called a bead map. Down here we have the raw fluorescence data from the phycoerythrin that's conjugated uh, to the detection antibody, which in, in effect uh, is, is conjugated to the analyte, which is conjugated to the capture antibody on the bead. So um, this is the fluorescence of the phycoerythrin that we're seeing here, uh, and it's the raw fluorescence values. Okay, so we have, um, we have standards, which are S, labeled S1 to S to S8, and then we have unknowns starting with the X values here. Okay, so that's basically raw fluorescence information to tell us if, um, if the, um, how much uh, analyte is uh, bound to each bead. Now, if we want to go and look uh, more closely at the data, the very first step after doing performing a run uh, that I like to do is go into the standard curve information, okay? Because we're, uh, particularly with cytokines and chemokines, we're typically relating the raw fluorescence to, uh, to a standard curve. And the really cool thing about Bioplex, actually, is that the standards are also plexed together. So we were looking at a 27-plex human assay. We didn't have to run 27 separate standard curves. The, the standards were also plexed together, all 27 analytes were plexed in a vial of standard uh, that we diluted so that we could also run 27 plexed standard curves. And they're all here in this list. So we can look at any standard curve we wish to see what the data looks like. Now, when we look at standard curves, especially when we're using a 5PL logistic regression on these standard curves, the, the way to qualify a standard curve is by the observed over the expected times 100. Now, just to explain this quickly, the expected value of a standard curve is actually the values that we programmed in for each analyte for the standard. So you can see we have a number of analytes that we programmed, well, all 27 for that matter, where we, where, where we told the instrument what the concentration of each of these analytes was. As a matter of fact, it's very straightforward, and it's in the previous uh, video on how to program this, but it's very, very easy to do this. So <coughs> once we have this information programmed, this is the expected concentration that we expect. The observed concentration, if we go back to the standard curve, is the concentration that is, that is given after fitting the raw data, the raw fluorescence data, to a 5PL regression. So that's the observed concentration for each of our analytes. Now, if you notice, you have different values of observed over expected times 100 here. Obviously, the best fit at, on a particular data point is where the observed equals the expected. That would be the, the ideal situation. 
and observe, if observed equals expected, then that value, then the ratio is 1 times 100 would be 100. So the closer we get to 100 for each of these points, the nicer the fit to the curve. Now we recommend accepting between 70 and 130 for these values. So you can see that all of these are okay except for this last value here, which is typical. Typically the end point, and uh, mostly I've seen with the higher, highest point on the standard curves, are usually off. So this is 551 in this case, and uh, let me just see if I can find one that's another one that might be off, maybe IL1 beta, yeah. Here we have 16 and then 708. So in the past, in previous versions of Bioplex Manager software, um, what you would have to do is mouse up to a data point, and then you could right click and set it as an outlier manually. Then the software recalculates the entire curve without that data point. And you can see now everything's fitting between 70 and 130, so we have a good fit here. And you'd have to do this for each and every analyte that you ran, okay, one at a time. Now, what we found was that a lot of people didn't really understand or weren't really, uh, didn't really have a very good explanation of how to to assess the quality of the standard curve by the observed over expected times 100. So they just weren't doing this at all. And then they were going directly to the report table, which basically calculates everything based on the standard curve. So, so you have the fluorescence, the fluorescence minus background for your standards, and then it calculates the observed concentration based on your standard curve and based on the expected concentration. And then, and then all the other values for your unknowns are calculated based on those standard curves that were done. But if you haven't properly um, qualified uh, each point on your standard curve to fit within 70 to 130, then the values in your report table for uh, observed concentration are obviously going to be uh, going to be off or, or invalid or perhaps even artifactual. So. What we decided to do to make this just even easier for people to, to make adjustments and to, and to actually make their standard curves fit better is just is, is to offer in version 6 of the software, which is the latest version, uh, an automatic optimization, which basically goes, does exactly what I did manually. Looks at all the data points, makes sure they all fit between 70 and 130. If there are outliers, it automatically sets the outliers, recalculates until you have a good fit on each point. So you just, all you have to do is click apply across all, all analytes, and then you can click optimize. You can also show, what's, what's nice about version 6 is you can also show the unknowns on your curves as well, so we can see where our unknowns are fitting on our standard curve. So now I can optimize across all the analytes, and now it's optimizing all 27 analytes automatically. So it goes through all 27, recalculates the standard curves and gives you a nice little report that tells you what, what it did. So, so for example, in most of the standard curves, there was no issue. In a, in a few of them, it removed the, uh, the highest standard. And in a couple of them, it noticed that, the, that one of them had a high percent CV in, in, uh, with respect to the two replicates of the standard curves. So now you click close, and now it's automatically fitted all the data points on the standards. So everything's done for you. So now you can confidently go back to the report table and you can analyze your data. Now, the, now when, we, when we once, so first step, raw data, that's where we start off. Next step, standard curve, optimize. Third step, report table. So now we're in the report table. And what I like to do in the report table is go to the options. And I like to look at the quantitative options. So we have a drop-down menu that sort of picks the options that are more, that are associated with the quantitative analysis of your data. There are many options you can choose, obviously, if you want to look at a variety of other things, sampling errors or, you know, bead standard deviation or whatever. You can look at these things. You can add them into your report table. But, but these are the ones that are automatically selected under the quantitative menu. And we can look at single analyte layout. And now we have analyte by analyte now 
we have our optimized standard curve information here. So now we can confidently look at the observed concentration to see how the values are. And you'll notice that some values have an asterisk by them, these lower values. That means that this point is within the range of detection of the instrument, but below the last point on the standard curve, so it extrapolated this point. And that's why we have an asterisk here. There may be other values, uh, so not with IL, IL1 beta as an example, but if I look at, uh, for example, VEGF, maybe there'll be some here. Yeah, we have a negative ORR. This means that this point was not detected by the instrument. It was below the limit of detection of the instrument. If you have a greater than ORR, it was above the, the limit of detection of the instrument. So, the, so we report our values and observed concentration such that uh, it's hard to make a mistake um, with respect to, um, to the data because you can't actually analyze. You'd have to re-enter the data point in Excel to be able to get rid of an asterisk or an ORR. For that reason, we actually recommend that you look at, so you see you have an asterisk here with a high value. That means this value was above the last point on the standard curve. It's extrapolated. Now, if you look at concentration and range, this column is the column that we actually recommend that you export for analysis. So, so when, you're, when you're actually analyzing the data, you'll notice that <coughs> only the values that are within the range of the standard curve are reported. All the other values are given either greater than ORR or less than ORR on, on the data. So, you know, and if we go back to IL-1 beta as an example, same thing here. So here in observed concentration, we have an asterisk, which means it was extrapolated, but in the concentration and range, it's not even listed. So you can't, you can't make a mistake again. So once we've done this and we've selected for quantitative, now if you want to break out your replicate info, you can. You can click on expand replicate info and then you can, you can see how your replicates, your individual replicates looked. So in this case, S1 was a combination of B1 and B2, and then you can see how the data looked between, between your replicates, if you wish. Okay? I typically take a quick look at that if I notice that my percent CVs are, are higher or lower, because the percent CVs give us an indication on, how the, on the quality of our data. Typically, um, we're looking at percent CVs that are, that are, you know, good percent CVs with this kind of an assay are below around 20%. Sometimes in the 20 to 30% range would be acceptable. Anything above 30% would, would start to be questionable. Um, and you can see that typically values that are high are, are the consequence of, of, um, of low, um, very low, um, um, concentration values, which are very close to the limit of detection of the instrument. So the closer you get to the background, essentially, the higher the percent CV, and that, this, this usually makes sense, okay? That's, that's normally uh, the way things work in, in pretty much any assay. As you get closer to the background, the variability goes way up. So we can now export our data to Excel. If we want to export this data, we can do it. So you just click Export Report Table to Excel. You can export it in single or multiple analyte layout. My preference, if I, if I export to single analyte layout and I click OK, I'm just going to switch over to Excel so you can see what I'm doing here. It's right now exporting all the 27 Plex data to Excel. So this is a good uh, number of data points. You're talking about almost 3,000 data points here that it's exporting off this plate. This is a 27 plex times 96 wells, so 27 analytes analyzed per well that, uh, that, that, the, uh, that the software is exporting into an Excel spreadsheet, and it's doing it on uh, a single analyte um, basis, so one analyte at a time. And if I switch over to Excel here, I'll just show you what the what the data looks like. So there's the Excel spreadsheet, and you can see we have exactly the data that was in, uh, in the Bioplex uh, software that we selected for the quantitative data points, and we have tabs, worksheets going across the Excel, to, uh, going across Excel to have our data. So you can see now in concentration and range, we will have, um, we will have data 
values only where we landed on within the quanti quantifiable range of the standard curve. However, in observed concentration, you'll get an asterisk in certain cases where we were below or above the limit of detection. So that's why we like to use concentration and range. Now, there's another way to look at the data, to export the data. And I'll do that now. I'm just switching back here to, uh, to Bioplex Manager. There we go. So there's another way we can look at our, we can export the data, which is the way that I prefer, actually. And that's, oops, sorry. And that's exporting in single, uh, sorry, multiple analyte layout. If I click OK there, so this is nice because multiple analyte layout um, allows you to compare each characteristic of the data that you're exporting uh, against all the analytes. So again, I'm going to switch back to Excel here so I can show you what I'm talking about. And there we go. So now we can look at any one of the raw data characteristics, so flore raw fluorescence, fluorescence minus, back minus background, percent CV if we wish. That could be interesting to see how the percent CVs went across all the, uh, all the analytes for the data points that, uh, that we had. Or we could look at concentration and range as an example. So we can see for all the analytes for our data how the concentration changed uh, um, between the various analytes across our samples. So very powerful ways to represent your data so that you can then easily uh, uh, plug these data points into uh, statistical software to analyze uh, further for p-values and p-tests and these kinds of things. So, uh, so, so um, uh, two different ways to export data. Mul single analyte, I prefer this multiple analyte to export. Now, just a couple more things to show you in Fileplex Manager that I think are important. Um, and really make the software very, very user-friendly and fun to work with, actually. And um, so here we go. If you need to change anything uh, with respect to the way you programmed the instrument or the way the plate was laid out, you have all the features right here to do so. So everything that we use to program a protocol is all available. We can change any of these. Uh, features. So we can change the analytes we were looking at if we, if we need to. We can reformat the plate. So we can now call unknowns blanks or, or standards if we wish. If we had two standard curves on a plate for whatever reason, we could now rename these as unknowns and, re and rename these standards. So if I were to change, for example, make, uh, make these two unknowns a blank, it's done. And now if I click on my report table, it's recalculated all the data using that blank that I just did. It's that fast. Very straightforward to do this. And I can go back into my, my, my analysis table and I can reprogram it as an unknown. And then again, just go back to my report table and everything's recalculated and now I have no blank anymore in my, uh, on, my, on my plate. So it's that easy to make changes to your, to your data based on how you want to analyze and maybe setting different blanks on your plate or whatever you wish to do. You can also um, enter your, uh, your sample descriptions after the fact. So if you forgot to enter them in uh, during the, the, the protocol setup, you can do it now, no problem. So everything is very easy to make adjustments to your, uh, to your data and, and, and reset information as you wish. So no worries at all about doing any of this kind of, uh, about making any of these kinds of changes. Also, uh, another uh, nice feature in the software is the ability to do normalization. So we can actually set up, if we, if, let's say we're doing a phosphoprotein assay, you can set up one of your one of your analytes if you're doing a templex and one of them happens to be stable across all your conditions. You can set it up as an internal control and say, I want to set up a, one of my analytes as an internal control to control for variability across my samples. And you can even set up a control sample. So you can do ratio metric analysis vis-a-vis -vis one of your samples on your plate. So if I click OK. Now I have the normalized ratio 
versus uh, one of the samples. So whatever that was, you know, I mean, the, the norm there here in this case, the normalized ratios are different. So, so you can see it's again very straightforward to do this. You can go back and make changes as you wish, as many times as you want, to 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 change uh, to change your uh, your data accordingly. So, however you wish to do this. Okay. So it makes it gives it it just adds more power to the way in which you can analyze your data. And then the final thing that I want to show you with respect to how to how to look at your data and get data different data out of your out of your um, uh, your analysis, especially with a high plex assay like a 27 plex or a 5 plex, like this is a 27 plex or a 10 plex, is you can go to graphs. And this is a nice feature as well. If I go into graphs, I can now, if I edit graph data, so I've made a graph here. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to go into a pre made graph, so all unknowns. Okay, and if I click on edit graph, it's not going to let me edit one of the default graphs. It's going to say, do I want to add a new graph? I'll say yes. I can type in the, the name of, of the graph. Okay, so that's, let's say that's my graph name for, for, uh, for what I want to do. And now I can parse out different data points in my analysis. You'll notice that this plate here had all different analyses, all different types of samples run on this. This was actually a multi-lab demo that we did. So there were, so we invited multiple labs to analyze six or seven or eight samples with this 27-plex assay. So this was, for example, one set of experiments. And then here was another lab that submitted. And down here was another one, and so on and so forth. So let's say I want to look at these samples here from a particular lab. And I want to look at all the analytes. I can go into graph options, and now I can look at samples across multiple analytes. If I click OK, and I click on, for my y-axis, let's say concentration and range, I can see what happened with all the analytes going across everything. So I can find out, oh, here's an analyte that was implicated. If I mouse to the bar, I can actually see this is IL-1, uh, IL-1 RA. So there we go. So I have values for these. That I can that I can look at. This was obviously very high. Okay, so I have this data now for all of these analytes. And what I can do now is I can also export this data to Excel. So I've I've basically made a a, a a smaller parsing out of my data. And I can say, okay, let's export this graph to it, this graph data to Excel. And if I go, I'll show you what it looks like in Excel. I'm just going to again change applications here. <coughs> there we go. So you can see now what I've exported is just for those samples, all the analytes for observed concentration. And this is all in ready graph graphable format. So if I if I if I select, for example, these wells. It's ready to graph. So I can click on the graph. I can click on a bar chart. And you can see, there it is. So I've, I've made a bar chart with, those, with that smaller set of data, as an example. Okay? So you can now have data, again, that's easy to parse out and put into a statistical analysis program if that's what you want to do with your, with your results. Okay? So just to review quickly, for BioFlex Manager, Three steps basically in this process when you open a data file. The first step is it opens in raw data, so you can see the raw data, see how it how it set up uh, the results, and how you how you can see the, the, the raw fluorescence data. Very first step after after opening the data file, I would go to standard curve, and I would optimize across all the analytes, and I would I like to show the unknowns. I like to see the unknowns on my standard curves, just to know how well. See, in this case, the unknowns were very, very uh, poorly recognized for a, for a number of the samples. And in other cases, uh, for example, with VEGF, all the unknowns fit across the standard curve. So this is pretty nice. OK, so you can look at that. You know, this is just very, uh, very qualitative uh, view of your data. But once we've optimized for the curve fit for all the analytes, then we can go to report table. And we can select for 
quantitative, quantitative results, click OK. And I don't want to expand replicate info, and I'm going to look at uh, single analyte layout as an example, and I can look at, you know, the results for my analytes. But then I can export the results to, uh, to Excel here, and I'd, res I, I'd export in multiple analyte layouts. So I can look at each of the, an each of the analytes, compare them all directly across my samples. The other thing I can do, if I don't want all the data going across, I want to give people their own data that, that they had if I, if I was sharing the plate with people, is going to graphs. Go to graphs. I've made a graph here, so I'll edit my graph. And I can select any wells I wish as an example. So there we go. I've selected those wells. I can select any analytes I wish. Okay, here I've selected all of them, but I can select, I can clear them all, and I can select, uh, you know, a bunch of other ones as I wish. And then I can click graph options. I can show samples across a single analyte if I want. So I can look at them analyte by analyte. Or I can go back and edit my graph, and I can select samples across multiple analytes. And now I can see which analytes of the ones I've selected actually had some kind of an effect with my data. And again, I can export that information to Excel as well. So I hope this was um, interesting and useful. Uh, the software is very, very uh, user friendly, easy to use, easy to make modifications to your, to your data, to plate information, to standard information if you need to make changes to those things after a run. And very, very easy to actually analyze your data and to graph your data and, and, and um, export the graph raw data to Excel to be able to do further analysis. So I hope this was useful and, uh, and I look forward to uh, working again with you in the future.